And here is Johann Tetzel, who was the, the preacher. And what happened of the indulgence? And you can see they're collecting the money here. Uh, there's the papal arms to show that this is a, a special indulgence. Uh, you see these things with all the little uh, uh, sort of seals that are hanging from it. So that's what an indulgence was. And what happened was that Tetzel, the person preaching here, uh, was <coughs> preaching in the neighboring territory, the Holy Roman Empire. Luther was, was a monk. He was a uh, uh, professor of Bible at this little university, Dinky University of Wittenberg. It had like 200 students. And he um, was also the parish pastor. And a number of his parishioners were going across the border and buying indulgences. And by this time, indulgence you could buy not only for yourself, but you could buy for your parents or your grandparents who were already in purgatory. And they had all the stories about, can you imagine your grand, your father or your mother, you know, suffering in purgatory when all you had to do was spend a gulden and buy an indulgence and get her out. Um, and Luther became very concerned about this. And what do academics do when they're very concerned? They do something very academic, and that's what he did. He put together 95 theses for debate. They were in Latin. Uh, they were designed, they were, they were pointed, and they were to get an argument going on whether indulgences uh, were appropriate or not. So that's why we're celebrating. This is what started. And it started as an academic debate. Only some humanists, some people could read Latin. Remember, in Luther's Germany, only 5% of the population could read. And most of them could only read German. They couldn't read Latin. This was a very esoteric uh, debate. But the interesting thing was, it involved money. Because this, the, the Pope's number two source of income was in solid indulgences. His first, there were, the Pope controlled a lot of states in the middle of Italy, and he received income from them. The number two was from indulgences. And because he controlled all these states in Italy, and the, the, all the surrounding territories were fighting with each other, he had to maintain an army. And so income was extraordinarily important to him. And Cardinal Albrecht needed the money to pay off the bankers. These bankers, they were called the Fuggers, were a little like Wells Fargo, not exactly trustworthy, and not willing to forgive large sums of money. So uh, when he was, when Albrecht received this, these 95 theses for debate, he gave them to his own theologians, uh, saying, you know, look into these, there must be something wrong, and he, and he sent it down to the Pope. And what happened as a result was they started, his own theologians, Albrecht attacked Luther, the papacy got involved, the theologians down there got involved, they're all writing these Latin treatises attacking each other, uh, and Luther's involved in this, and meanwhile he decides to start issuing a number of German pamphlets on a range of pastoral issues. So, uh, go to the next one. Here are the 95 theses. As you, you can't see, but if you could see, you, uh, you, you could tell that uh, no one would want to read these. Um, they are for debate. Uh, they were soon uh, 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 superseded by push the button. Luther's first best-selling publication, A Sermon on Indulgences and Grace. This is it. This is the picture of the, the front page. It was a simple exposition in simple, wonderfully written German. Luther was one of the greatest German writers ever. Uh, explaining the sacrament of penance and explaining why it's better to truly repent your sins than to buy an indulgence. That you need to trust what God has done for you rather than trust in what you're doing for yourself, with or without assistance from the church. In the course of three years, there were 25 editions of this treatise. Remember, the printing press was invented in the middle of the previous century, around 1450. So it's only about 70 years old at this point. Um, and paper is very expensive. There are no copyright laws. And so something like this, the way it spread was a printer would print, they could only print about a thousand copies and then they would have to reset the type because the type is very soft. You can think about, if you've ever done apple or potatoes where you cut out and you stamps, they don't last very long. 
height of that day was about 2,000, one of 2,000 would be extraordinary. Um, paper was expensive and it was heavy. So the cheapest way for something to spread is a printer would, would find out that in the local town something was really selling well. They would buy one copy, they'd go to the next town that has a printer and they would reprint. Luther never got any money for any of this, but he became the best-selling author in Germany. And the first best-selling, and arguably the best best-selling author in the history of the West. From the period 1500 to 1530, his first major publication was in 1518, half, halfway through that. 20% of all pamphlets that were printed were Luther's. No one else, I don't care whether it's Stephen King or whatever, uh, was that popular. And he was popular because he was relevant, he wrote beautifully, he was funny, he was sarcastic, he was easily read aloud to other people. You might ask yourself, when the only 5% of the population reads, how does this idea spread? People who could read German would read to others, pastors would read it and then repeat the, the message from the pulpit. And so with, within a very short period of time, Luther's 